cool. See what I did there? All right. So this is not a lecture, okay? We are going to have a chat, a discussion. We're going to be exchanging ideas. This is very informal. I just made this yesterday. So you guys are, you're, oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. All right. <laughs> Don't judge me too harshly. No. No, this is, no, this should be fun. This is our Friday social media awesomeness stuff. Okay. Did everybody read the article that I posted? Awesome. What did you guys think of that? Did it make I, sense? That was actually interesting. That was interesting. There was one thing though. I was there's an app I I kind of heard about like watch uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, that's like a what messaging app. Yeah. It's like it's you don't know what WhatsApp app. is. It's like it's, I never okay, use it. One thing it's for me, I feel like it's always my Latin American friends use it more than my friends from that were born here. My friends. Oh, okay. It's the que pasó app. Yeah. <All right. laughs> What's that? So do you guys find like, like when I think of messengers and, and things like that, it's mostly just texting for me. I mean, I'll send memes and gifts and stuff like that, but I'm not usually like, like on Snapchat, I'm not sharing like a video that I'm hoping a lot of people are going to see. It's usually for like one person or maybe a small group. Is that your experience as well? Kind of? Yes. I didn't use You're not up on it? Yeah. I didn't use any kind of messenger apps until... Even living overseas, I didn't really, mm -hmm. other than Facebook. But until I came here, and the, the detachment has a group me. Right. Oh my God. And I had no idea what that was. And I was just like, okay, cool. And now it's like the bane of my existence. But I hate it. Like, I can I just unfollow group. this? Because everyone posts stuff like all night long. I'm like, guys, no. Stop it. On the weekends, I know I have no duty. I just put it on mute. I'm like, that's Turn it off. Did you have something, sir? Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, for me, apps are in a great way of learning this for example, I married my husband who's Spanish and his whole family is Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so I downloaded Duolingo and oh, it's yeah, yeah. helping me along with Spanish. And so I think apps are really going to be a lot easier. Well, the, in the context of what we're learning today, yeah, apps are amazing, and like our phones are about like 70% to 80% now of like what where we consume content. Phones, tablets, like mobile. Okay, and the thing about mobile is everything's bite size. You know, short, sweet, to the point get the info, you know, digest it, move along, all that stuff. So you probably saw the term snackable, and that's what we're kind of talking about. So the, the concepts that I want to get across today is like, it's piggybacking. You guys remember the intro to TV news class where we talked about all of the, the videos, the types of products that we're going to be producing while we're here at Dimfos, learning how to shoot and edit. We are going to be doing some of these as well, OK? Yay, fun stuff. Um, it's not graded, but it want, I want to get you guys in the mindset because I'm going to show you a ton of examples of what people in the field are doing right now. And it, none of them are these. <laughs> VOs and BOSATs and packages. Yes, sir. Um, in, in my wing back in Puerto Rico, we don't have a radio station. Mm -hmm. We don't have a TV station. Right. Oh, yeah, there's like a Facebook page, right? So it's like yeah. a Facebook page that they put out all their info and exactly. their events and stuff. So it's really And if you're cool. putting out packages on Facebook, you're probably losing most of your audience because that's, right. that's not how it works on the web. So that's what, what we're talking about today. So yeah, snackable content, something you can just instantly grabs your attention. The info is presented, you know, not very polished sometimes, but just it's right there in your face. You can get it. It's useful. And then you can move on. Okay. So this is a little misleading. And Mr. Milner brought this point up. I believe um, Herman Silverthorne had, had talked about this as well. We're not goldfish, okay? Like, we can focus on things. It doesn't mean, like, oh, we only have an 8.2 seconds to, to get the message out or they're moving on to the next thing. Yeah, exactly. I've already lost my audience. I've been up here <laughs> rambling for more than nine seconds. <laughs> this is more about how long you have to hook their attention, okay? If you hook their attention, then, yeah, they're going to stick around for a little while to, to see what you've got, okay? But that is a short amount of time still. Like you can't, I see it all the time where people in social media in, in the military will still post their videos to their streams and include the slate. Okay, that's nobody cares about that slate except for the people that are producing newscasts. The audience that's viewing your Facebook stream, they're gonna see that slate and like what is this? Because it auto plays, right? And so you've got 10 seconds of just a black and white screen with text that doesn't mean anything to anybody. But for most of our purposes, you would not, like if you threw, if you made a package or something like that, even if you were going to post a package on, on Facebook or something, 
take that slate off of there. That is not the thing that's going to grab their attention in the first eight seconds. Do you have some parts? Yeah, that's why I mean, there's like this like major app that's really popular called Vine. Mm -hmm. And what's great about it is that the entire <coughs> video is six seconds. Is it six? So yeah, that's even shorter than I thought. I think they don't even time. have, like, you don't even have, like, no time. you have the attention to lose it. Right. You're like, and even then, because like, it's like 8.2, the video will be over, like, Wait, what was that? By the so time you're, back to watch like, what did I just watch? But it loops, so like you can watch it a few times. But, but yeah, so all of these, so so yeah, Vines is up there, and that's like six seconds. Instagram, I think, is 15. But Instagram, I mean, that's a really good. Did they? Really? Okay. Yeah. So I know, crazy. Oh my god, that's like that's like four times my attention span. Yeah. Yeah. What's the limit on Snapchat? Is it 15? 10. 10. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, tweets, <laughs> tweets. you can put like YouTube links and they'll play within Twitter. So those can be pretty much as long as you, you want them to be. Um, but GIFs, memes, super popular and super influential. Like our entire political campaign right now is being waged via meme. It's a meme war. And it doesn't, have, I mean, it's insanely catchy to just, just it's, it's complete fluff. You know, this snackable stuff, it's junk food. But it can be very effective in getting messages across, and most of them aren't video. Although I've seen like the GIFs that have video and they'll have like text at the top and bottom of the screen. Super effective stuff. And I'll show you some examples of that that the military are using to effect. You know, we're not immune from trends and things like that, or we shouldn't be. We should be following some of these major trends instead of sticking just to the DINFOS model, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, these are kind of where the audiences are on uh, the different platforms. We don't need to spend too much time on that. Um, but this is what it does for us and what millennials, that's the big term. This is where they are, okay? So, but you guys all read this, so I don't wanna spend too much time on this. I wanna show you some of the examples that I was able to pull from social media. So this I thought was probably the most interesting slide out of that, that blog was like the different ways to use really short, engaging, video content to, to get your message across. So the first one, I don't think it applies too much to us in the military realm because this is more for like marketing, like brands and stuff. Like if you're a big, uh, I don't know, what's a famous car company like Audi or something like that. Like Audi's social media, if like one of their customers was like, oh, I just got my new, what is it, A5? I don't know what the cars are, but, um, but they shared like a cool little video of them like getting their car for the first time. Audi could like reshare that and be like, congrats, dude. Welcome to the family type stuff. That's like you feel a part of something. You feel a part of that organization, right? I don't think in the military we get too much of that, but I pulled a couple examples that I think are at least somewhat parallel. Um, so the first one was from Airman Magazine, and there was, uh, you guys all remember the big Pokemon craze. Anybody still playing Pokemon? <laughs> a few of us. I just deleted it like a couple days ago. I hadn't played it in weeks, but. Um, but when that first came out, like everybody all across social media was trying to tap into that zeitgeist of Pokemon, everything's so cool. So there was somebody who used Air Force footage from Divids and created a cool like Pokemon video. And Airman shared that video. This was it. It's a little weird and creepy. But, yeah. was how do Pokemon get distributed across the world? <laughs> oh my god. This is a form of animal abuse. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, here's it's the best so part. Here comes the best part. <laughs> They're okay. No Pokemon are harmed. In All right. <laughs> So the Air Force did not make this video, but they reached out. It, it became, it was like viral, like the day it came out, it already had like hundreds of thousands or millions of views. Uh, the, the social media team at Airmen found it, reached out to the guy who made it, was like, hey, could we share this? And he was like, super cool, yeah, go for it. So they shared it. Yeah, the, the graphics are amazing. But yeah, this is just Divid's footage that he just repurposed for his own little thing. And, uh, and they shared it, and this was like right at the height of Pokemon first couple of weeks when it came out. And, uh, there's people like, still like really, really, really. Oh yeah, there's some people that don't. Like yeah. I play it a little bit, but there's other people that like just started last week that are already like past my level, and I'm like, I, I played it off and on for the past like month. <laughs> like holy crap. Yeah. So before we make it too far into like the examples, let's talk about why would this be valuable? 
What is the command information angle mm -hmm. of this video? <laughs> we deliver. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but it's awesome. Hey, whatever, yeah. Air Mobility Command, whatever you need, we'll get it there on target, on time. <laughs> But as professional communicators, to tell the Air Force story, what does this do for us? Just um, for me, it kind of made it a little bit fun. Like, a lot of civilians look at the military mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my gosh, the military. Yeah. Like, they don't fathom what we do, but this kind of gives them like a fun perspective, like, you know, like we're all not crazy robots that jump out of planes, exactly. you know, Pokemon do too. <laughs> do you have some? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was rubbing my head. Yes, ma'am. I, I agree with Hughes. I think it, um, it lightens up the image of U.S. military, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of bridges the gap between civilian life and Military life. I, yeah. I think it's funny. Like, we're cool. We play Pokemon. <laughs> That's our we know I think, what things are. Yeah, I think it'd be good for like a recruiting tool because one, you have a lot of kids in high school that are interested in this game. Mm -hmm. They see the name and the title, and they click on the video, and at the same time, they're seeing a little bit of the Air Force mission. So it's kind of yeah. like a like a bait and switch. Exactly. Something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not in quite those terms, but yeah, it's well. <laughs> what you're doing is generating engagement. You're building an audience. You're staying in tune with you know the things that they like to see, and you're yeah you're you're, you're humanizing your, your yourself, your mission, your branch, your service. Not everything has to be like a straight news hit them over the head with the command information. You know what I mean? Like you want to get that stuff in there, but these kind of videos are kind of how you keep that audience interested. So like it's almost like you know how you put like the dog medicine inside the snack and you give it to them and they, they eat it and they don't really know that they're getting the medicine. Like if you pepper this stuff through your social media feed, the, the really valuable information stuff is gonna show up in their, their feed because they're gonna be clicking like and uh, sharing these types of things with it. So it's almost, not like the bait and switch, but definitely it, it helps build your audience. It's the Mary Poppins method. Spoonful of sugar, yeah. Um, but I was gonna add to what she said too, um, the humanizing thing or the um, lightening, lightening the image. I think everyone in this room would agree that that's a good thing, but I will say that that's some of the pushback you will get mm -hmm. for doing stuff like this. Every time. Not everybody yeah. thinks that lightning in the, uh, the image of the military is a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. There's like, oh, we pay people to goof off and make Pokemon mm -hmm. videos. Like, those comments are going to come, and they're going to come regardless of what kind of video you post. Right. If you post something with the commander that's just like a straight up talking head video, somebody's going to find something to gripe about. Mm -hmm. So you can't take a lot of the negativity too seriously. So I would just realize this, but I'm pretty sure that everybody in the room, no matter what their uniform is or what service they're a part of, laughed at this video. Mm -hmm. So taking, excluding the civilian population, if you're just focused on just the military, I think everybody in the military could take this as a lighthearted message. Yeah. And it kind of brings everybody together because you know that's army's going to be yeah. like yeah well that's why pokemon are never where they need to be because the air force <laughs> can't drop them anywhere and the air force really looks really at it as, you know as a, as a fun little you know joke yeah and, and so i think military wise i think this is a, a video that could potentially that is an excellent excellent point sorry partner so yeah never lose sight of who our number one customer is i see it a lot where you know because it's social media and everybody has it now that it's almost like we're performing for this broader audience. And it's great when you get that engagement from the larger audience as a whole, but the number one people you need to be concerned about is your brothers and sisters in uniform, and that's who you need to be talking to. It's great if it you know, goes viral and like, everybody loves it, but don't alienate your core audience with, with some of this stuff. Yes? I think that's also kind of like backtracking what you guys been saying in terms of, that's also why like pages like, you know, well, today's Friday, Army Moments, and like let terminal lance are mm -hmm. such popular pages is because they you know the civilians kind of get that you know that human element right hey okay, these you know these people are human they like to do crazy stuff as well but then there's also like that you know military military thing it's that in joke like, type thing like you feel like you're part of this special group of people that you know yeah, get it civilians yeah the UN, all the military people are like ah, we're crazy right <laughs> <laughs> i just love the duffel blog because so many people still think it's like real <laughs> <laughs> this chair is like, Obama! Yeah, all right. So let's move on. Um, this is another example of 
there, there are tons of outlets out there that use our stuff and repurpose it. And there's nothing wrong with then resharing the stuff they do. Sometimes they do a better job or they're faster at like sharing stuff. So this next example is, uh, is very recent. It was from a Marine who, uh, um, not a refugee, maybe uh, from Iraq, but she came over here with her family during the Iraq war and has since grown up and it has become a Marine. She just recently graduated from basic uh, boot camp. Um, and there was pictures and uh, a story and I think some videos the Marines had done, but it hadn't, uh, this other website called Task and Purpose, uh, it's on Facebook, they packaged this up really well, like within the next day and made this. Huh, there should be some music with it, but there's no text or no narration or anything. Is there audio? Where is? Yeah, there I'm. Yeah, so they just posted this. And the Marines just posted something else on this either late yesterday or today, but um but it's timely, it's short, and it's, you know, it's snackable. It gets the whole story out there. But again, this going back to that point that was in the article of like using the work of your audience members or people that are kind of affiliated with you to your advantage. If somebody made this already, like you're possibly thinking about doing something like this for this same story, and it's already out there, like, yeah, it'd be great to have like the, the Marine Corps version of this as well. But if timeliness is your, your main thing and this just happened, why not just share it and be like, you know, courtesy of task and purpose. And they already made it. The story's the same, you know. You got to be kind of careful with that. If they, if they put any kind of a spin on it or whatever, make it like, you know, political, watch for that kind of thing. But, you know, A, they, it builds that relationship with them. Like you're sharing their stuff, so they might be more likely in the future to share your stuff. Okay. And it, and it still gets the message out there in a, in a really good way. Yeah. Another really cool thing about that, and that's actually called user-generated content. Mm -hmm. Okay, you yourself don't actually have to produce that. All you have to do right. is share it, right? And so not only are you, you know, uh, not even have to produce it yourself, but you also open yourself up to that audience. So now, you know, you go from the, the people that just follow you, mm -hmm. now you get, you task know, and task and purpose, now you get their audience too. Yeah, it's a great message. It helps tell the Marine Corps story, it tells the, the American story. Um, so actually it's kind of good that the audio didn't play with that because it leads to a point about these kinds of videos and how they're structured versus the VOs, VOSATs, packages, and features that we're going to be teaching you here at Dimfos. Um, one thing is everything is typed out, okay? Because on your mobile devices, the, the videos audio, auto play without audio, audio. Auto play without audio. So everything needs to be up there captioned in eye-popping, eye-grabbing text that's impactful, that gets the message across. So how did this video start out? Let's see. Okay. So it's kind of cool. Um, the, the picture started up in color, but kind of faded to black and white and drew attention to the text. Short, you know, easy to read. All caps is usually the way to go with these things without it. Um, it's not a fancy font. It's just a basic all caps white font that's easy to read and big. Um, San, yeah, sans serif is the term for this font family that doesn't have any uh, like the, the flourishes and things like that. Um, but, but yeah, you don't need any voice for this really or any audio. I don't know why there's no music on this. There should be. Um, but so it kind of follows that, that pattern of photograph with some, uh, some information on there. Okay. But everything is able, to, you can read everything. You don't even have to click, you know, the audio on here if you don't want to because all the information is there so that's how when you guys get a chance to start packaging some of these up that's how you need to be looking at it like what are the the, the impact points how do I write that out in a conversational attention grabbing short message on screen so that this works even if my audience can't hear it okay so short all text and some music it's pretty easy to do okay. all right so let's go to the next part Okay, so another way that you can engage with your audience and a really good way to, to kind of keep them interested and to give you ideas for content is just stay topical, okay? Look at what is going on in the world around you and tie that back to the messages that you want to get out to your audience. So uh, Airman did that with the Pokemon thing when that was hot, okay? It was topical at that point. It, if they did that now, it would be like, 
kind of late to the game there, Airman. But they did it like you know that that week or within a couple of weeks of the release of the game. So um, national holidays, uh, sporting wins maybe not so much because you know our audience is global. You don't want to alienate 90% of the population that doesn't root for that team. But um, but just big cultural events. Um, the hurricane that's about to hit Florida right now would be a really great one for like the weather service. The Air Force has hurricane hunters that fly into these things and drop little sensors. I haven't seen a lot from the Air Force on that. They usually do it, um, but you know, something like that, super topical, everybody's tied in. Why not show how the Air Force is helping to support that reporting on warning people to get out of the area? You know, it's topical, it's relevant, it's now, and it's easy to get that info to a large audience online. Um, Going to see a lot of Marine stuff because the Marines are hands down the best branch at getting this content out okay. online right now. Yep. Air Force is second place probably, but it's not really that close. <laughs> Given the Marines a lot of credit because they're doing a great job with this. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples of these like topical, relevant, cool little videos that the, the Marines and some other people have been doing. So this first one. <laughs> right. So yeah, that came out like the week Star Wars came out. Do you think they were like, oh, Star Wars is out this week. Let's put this together. No. How, how long do you think in advance they had to do plan that, Mr. Miller? That was probably like at least a month in advance. Yeah. Probably. It especially, be, too. especially, mm -hmm. uh, and that's at least because of the the chain they probably go through to make sure they're er, all the all eyes are on it. Yeah. Because yeah. you can want a realist video ever, but from the O three up to the O ten that that has to go through, somebody's going to say something. So you better get started early on stuff like this. Okay. Um, but it's great. It was hugely popular. For the most part, again, you're always going to have those people that are clapping back with, uh, we shouldn't be promoting, you know, Star Wars or whatever. It's like, like we're helping the box office of Star Wars. You know, had the Marines not produced this, that movie would have totally tanked, right? No, it, it's, it's okay to be human, to tie yourself into the rest of the Earthlings that live on this planet, okay? We're not just this organization that is meant to kill people, except for the Marine Corps, obviously. And at that point, but, too, you would want to argue, no, 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 we're not helping yeah, them, right. they're helping us. Right. We're grabbing on and riding yes, it on up. Exactly, That's, yeah. Um, there was another one that the Navy did that was really cool, um, which was a like a shot-for-shot kind of remake of the teaser trailer from Star Wars, um, but it was shot on a ship. And yeah, it was really cool. I should have pulled that one for this, too, but I'll, I'll, I'll find it. It was really good. All right, so here's another one. Uh, so this was for Star Wars, right? A big cultural event that you can plan for. Everybody knew more than it. People had tickets to that movie a year before it came out. All right, that was how crazy it was. Yeah, Mr. Sergeant Tolliver had him. All right. So here's another one. Maybe. Halloween's coming up. Record, record, record. <laughs> Cool, right? Short. I mean, not that difficult to put together. Maybe a little cheesy, but it's, it's fun. Like, people like this stuff. And again, the whole reason to do things like this that aren't, you know, hey, Marines, have a safe Halloween, like from, you know, some general, like, it still gets the same message across. But it's a more engaging way to do it. It's more fun. It's better for social media, okay? And kind of going back to what you were saying earlier about remembering your primary audience, <clears throat> a lot of you probably found that extremely cheesy and and marines will too mm -hmm. but it's highly relatable to marines because yeah. of the, um, the training that we go through it. it relates all the way back to boot camp yeah you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and yeah um ha halloween's on the same day every year right so keep these things in mind the calendar is important your audience is around halloween time is going to want to see halloween related stuff so Give that to them. Tie your message back into what's going on in the world. And couldn't that be like a video that's played like next year? I'm like, sorry? Like, couldn't that be like a video that's brought back like so, next year or something? Yeah, or it could be. If enough people remembered it yeah, or recognized it. It could be, but you kind of want to be careful with recycling stuff like that too. You know? I mean, yes and no. You want to stay fresh and you don't want to like, hey, you guys did this last year. 
You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's kind of a one-hit wonder type thing. But those, there's not a whole lot of time and effort invested in this. Yes. You have the idea, you do it, and then you can start working on next year's. You know, the like, pumpkin one, uh, in contrast to the Star Wars one, didn't right. take a lot of approval. Right. So, hey, super easy. have this idea, run it through the shop real quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. you two go go do that. I was just curious because like there's some commercials like to this day like I'll be like oh man I, I remember that one for commercial dozens like of years. I haven't yeah. seen that in a long time you know I wonder if I can look it up on YouTube mm -hmm. and find it so yeah that's so why. and and yeah viral videos like they they surge in popularity sometimes for like no reason right I was like oh I saw this three years ago but all of a sudden. The thing with Harambe, I don't know why that all of a sudden, like that happened months and months and months ago, but right now it's like enormously huge. And I was like, what What triggered it? Like it was like, yeah, it was huge, like still. It was huge, but it was like a huge news story. I don't remember it being like this meme thing. Maybe, yeah, now it's like in everything. It's like social media takes news events and then takes their own little twist on it right. and fun of it. Like, yeah. They were making that like a huge deal. Like, it was all over the news for like at least like a week or two. I remember so, when it was in the news. I just don't remember it being memed to I death like it is right now. <laughs> yeah. like, but, which is odd because it's so far after the effect. All these killer clowns or whatever that's out right now. There's like a meme I saw yesterday that said uh, Harambe would have never yeah. let this happen. Something like that. Yeah. Everything is tied back to Harambe right now. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 you can tie into the these things. You guys are consumers of content just like your audience is. Like, find out what's popular and constantly be thinking of ways to tie it back to your message and stay relevant. That's how you keep people's attention. Um, yeah, well, you, you still got to take propriety in, into consideration. And like, some of those things, like, I don't know how you would necessarily tie Harambe back. But hey, if you figure it out, good. Uh, so this one, you know, not all the, the the holidays or big events have to be like huge things. Um, there's calendars out there, like every day is a national something day. Every single day of the year has its own cause, celeb. So one of them uh, that the Marine Corps tied into was National High Five Day. They knew it was coming up. They thought it was a cool little thing, so they made a video for it. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole thing. Why not? It's fun. Okay, so. Yeah. Be, yeah. Be thinking about how these are portrayed, though. This, this video doesn't exist in a vacuum, okay? It's part of a Facebook post or an Instagram post. So it's going to have a headline that explains what the heck is going on in this video, okay? Because you just see this and it's like, good job. Like, I have no idea what this is about. It's like, I passed my PT test. Boom. But. That's the way these things could like be used. If this, in, 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 this engendered some sort of like meme-ish vibe with your audience, like these things could could take on a life of their own. And I think I saw a little bit of that with this one, where people, it was high five day, but this got shared afterwards for like, you know, good good job, Marine, and they would post this video as like high five. You know what I mean? Like it's it's it, you don't know where these things are gonna go. But back to yeah, like a, this might have worked better as a GIF, just something that would repeat. But you don't get the audio with the GIF. Um, but yeah, think of you know how to structure a post with something like this, and not just the video. Okay, so the high, the high five day was a part of the headline, like "Hey Marines, it's high five day today," that sort of thing. And they had some sort of command information that went along with that. I don't remember, but no, actually this was one of those. Definitely, this was sugar. Unlike just nothing. Yeah, there was no command information yeah. with that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. Moving on. Yes. Is it true for like your like, say, social media social media pages for like your unit? Like there's some times where not everything you post is gonna have to do with command information, right? right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that what we've been, been talking those about. Things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to keep your audience interested and engaged in you know what's going on. Depending on the organization, some people even say 80, 20, 90, 10. So like 80% sugar, 20% command information. Yeah. So like you keep drawing people to you with the sugar. But then, you know, you hit them up a little bit every other time with the main information. Yeah. I mean, if 80% if, if of what you post is kind of the dry, boring, I mean, it could be shot well and everything, but if it's just like really specific to a certain audience that maybe only likes Humvees or whatever, and that's the kind of stuff that you're always posting, it's going to turn people off. Like, you really have to like give them the sugar. <laughs> is there a reason like why there are so many Marine videos versus 
because they're a lot better at it right now than everybody else. That's why, I mean, the best examples, if you just go to all the different Facebook pages of the official um, services Facebook pages and click on videos, like the Marines are killing it versus everybody else. Like, would that have to do with leadership or just? It, it has to do with structure, like their team. They have a dedicated team of actual, like, Marines that run it, which is the best way to do it. The Air Force has uh, a team that's, they're moving to the Pentagon, but they were like in uh, San Antonio and they weren't really plugged into what's going on at the Pentagon. And it was like 90% civilians, and like a couple of staff sergeants, I think, that were on the team. And they just really weren't communicating with the field about like what's going on. And they had their own agenda and nobody knew what it was because they weren't communicating. So it was really hard to get any kind of like unity going on there. Do you have some private? Let's, let's, well, I was going to add on to him, like, I know, like, the Army, at least, like, my unit has posted, like, twice on their Facebook page in the last year. Like, it's, like, awful. It makes me want to cry. And if you guys are public affairs. Right. And then I'm going to, like, a uh, public affairs detachment, and I'm like, it's all public affairs. Why do you guys suck so much? <laughs> <I know. laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it's, people have different, different missions and different things that they focus on, but... A lot of people just never get beyond what they're taught at Dinfos. So that's why I'm teaching this, because now you can say, hey, I was taught this at Dinfos, so it's cool. But yeah, a lot of people like, I mean, I know people that I went through 15 years ago with that are still like doing nothing but just straight up anchor packages. And that's the only thing they do. And it's like, that's okay for some stuff, but I mean, that's not the way people consume media nowadays. You have to change with the times, all right? So we talked about sharing you know, user-generated content if it's available, they do the work for you. We talked about staying fresh, staying relevant, tapping into the now and what's popular and tying your message back into that, finding creative ways to do that. So this extra toppings piece, I found some things that went along with that as well. So promoting larger campaigns with bite-sized things, throwing up like a snackable 12 to 15 second clip that links back to a whole web page that you have about you know, maybe sexual assault prevention or something like that. Hook them with the attention of just the little snackable video and then when they have time, because you know, most people, they're, they're standing there in the line at Starbucks you know, scrolling through their feed, they might see this cool little video, but they don't have time to like, read a whole article or watch a whole you know, three to five minute documentary on that story. But you can just give them a little taste and then hopefully they come back and get the full um, the full story. It also is good for like behind the scenes stuff. If you're working on a big thing that you want to generate hype for, interest for, you know, movies do this with teaser trailers, TV shows do this with like little commercials or liners or promos or things like that. We should be doing this too. If we've got big campaigns that are coming up, generate that interest. Show your audience that you're working on something big. Airman Magazine has been pretty effective with this. Um, when they go out TDY um, to cover a story, They'll let their audience know, like, hey, in a couple months, Airman Magazine is going to be releasing a story on this. But in the meantime, here's a quick little behind the scenes glimpse. This was a really popular one that they did um, about Red Flag, which is a big um, combat exercise that the Air Force does out in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Exactly, yeah. But this one worked for several reasons. You kind of had to be tied into like what was going on in the Air Force and social media at the time. Um, our secretary of the Air Force was getting hammered by this one particular blog that's really popular, John Q. Public, because she would take selfies with airmen all the time. So she was like known as the selfie queen or whatever. And so like the Air Force and public affairs and selfies was like, I don't know, this weird thing that was happening at the time this was made. And so the headline of this was, this is how we do selfies at Airman Magazine. And he was like, and it's really cool. And like, even the blogger that was like hitting us for taking selfies of all things, oh, it's so unprofessional, um, shared this and was like, this is cool. You know? So this was super effective in that. It also helped to generate interest for the upcoming story of, you know, in a couple of months, Airman Magazine is going to release the story on Red Flag. Here's uh, Airman Magazine producer Jimmy Shea, that sort of thing. So it, it generates that interest. And this was like really popular. It had hundreds of thousands of views, just this short little thing, and got Airman Magazine you know, a lot of publicity. Former Marine social media. Yep, and now he's at all hands. He's, he's, he's going to work his way across the entire <laughs> DOD. Um, I forget what this next one is, but I think it's an... Oh, I think the next one is uh, an example from industry. I think it's a GoPro video. Uh, so GoPro just came out with their drone. It's called the Karma. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. 
Um, <clears throat> and so to, it's, it's been hyped up for a long time because it was delayed a few times. They were trying to keep the audience like, we promise it's coming, you promise you're gonna love it. So they produce a lot of different little snackable videos that would show up on people's social media like, hey, karma's coming, and this is one of them. So you have to know a little bit about the Karma drone to know why that works. Karma's camera actually comes out and it has its own handheld like stabilizer that works that you can hold the GoPro on. So it's, they're say, saying it's more than a drone. And so they got this shot by like holding the camera and doing this and they're like, how did you get a drone shot that low to the ground? Well, that's part of like the interest level. But how could some, like just taking this exact formula, something like this, can we think of a way that we could maybe tie this to something that we would want to talk about in the military. Not a product launch necessarily, but there's something coming down the road and we use this video or this type of video to tease it. Any ideas popping into your heads? Nothing? Oh, Sergeant, yep. Of, all I could think of is like maybe for military-wise, a little toy tank and then get one of like a striker or something coming down the road. That'd be cool. And maybe that's promoting like the exercise that's coming out, like the brigade-wide exercise that's going to be that you're going to be reporting on. That, that's a really great idea. Yes, ma'am. We could probably recreate it on a runway and have like a plane mm -hmm. taking off. Yeah. Or jet or something. Maybe road safety, driver safety, and you know, be aware of. Yeah. Excellent ideas, all of them. Like I mean, I see stuff all the time. That I'm like, man, I could steal that and use it for this purpose. Um, what, the one that I thought of was like putting a sneaker here and doing the exact same type of shot and then like, you know, a, a formation running past the camera and say, hey, our new track is about to open next week. You know, something like that. But I mean, the idea is you can repurpose stuff. It's okay, you know. You don't have to be entire. like I'm not creative enough to come up with something like this entirely on my own. But if I see something like that, I'd be like, oh, I could do this with that. Yes, sir? If you're like, if you're... I guess in charge of the change through your unit. Mm -hmm. When you post something, can you ever do like unit specific in terms of like? You should do unit specific. Or you should definitely to, to the masses. Keep the masses in mind, but back to what I was talking about. Who is your core audience? Okay, if you have a unit page that you know you're trying to engage with just those people, if it's targeted to the whole world, they're not going to feel like special because of that. You know what I mean? But if you target something that's like just for them, it's going to be really impactful. Let's say like a brigade is having like a moto run, so like the entire, like everybody's getting together and they're doing mm -hmm. this whole moto run. You can have like, you have like the sneaker and then you go and see this formation run and say, hey, the brigade moto run is next week. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's on your unit Facebook page. It's specifically for your audience, but it's very well produced. It's going to make your audience feel really special and really like impressed by your efforts to communicate with them. Because this looks like something that would have been produced by like headquarters army, but it's just for your little brigade, you know? Do you have something, Mr. Miller? Well, it, it sounded like you might have been, he was asking whether or not you could actually limit the reach of a post. Oh, is that what you were talking about? Probably right. more than that. Oh. You can. <laughs> to an extent. But, no, so, you can be like geographic specific. Oh, really? yeah. But you want to be picky about whether or not you do that because then you're truly limiting its potential. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that with reservation you know you don't want to do that unless you absolutely need to like mm -hmm. I know that we did with the Marine Corps Facebook page uh, to help support smaller units like we just knew that the majority of our audience would not get this but we think it's important enough to have big Marine Corps put it out so we put it for that geographical location of the base mm -hmm. and only people on Facebook that are in that area see it. Okay, so say like Fort Meade was to put out something specific for Fort Meade, you can do it geographically so it's only around this area where people on base? Yes, but I'm saying you don't want to do that typically. Yeah, because there's other venues besides social media. I mean, you have Commander's Access Channel, which is still, you know, in use at some places, um, email. There's also briefings, you know, like you could create a video just for the, like if they were going to brief your base, your commander will love you if you create something really cool and engaging that's going to help them 
you know, resonate with their audience right off the bat. And a really cool video is like one of the best ways to do that. And your commander comes out there and be like, hey, did you guys like that? And then they get into the meat and potatoes of what they're there to talk about. But yeah, they, they love stuff like that. And then, yeah, it's just <laughs> that building is who gets to see it, not you know the big wide world out there. Yes, ma'am. I think another downfall might be if you limit it only to your area. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people's family members follow the pages of the bases mm -hmm. they're on. Like my parents follow Fort Lee yeah, now. They're a huge part of our audience. They want to see what's going on here, yeah. and, or like I still follow from bases I've lived on, and. It, it's nice to still see what's going on everywhere. everywhere. So I think yeah, that definitely. Would so I mean, it's you. You want to keep the content like targeted towards your audience, but you never know who's going to also see it and be like, "Oh, that's really cool," and, and share it. But in specific situations, yeah, you may want to limit who is having access to it. You go geographically specific. If somebody goes on the page, they'd still be able to see it, right? So it's not like, "Oh, you're outside." I'm not region. exactly sure how it works. I don't. You can't see it. I, yeah, I mean, it might have to do with like your IP address from where your computer is, and it may not. It, it'll say like content unavailable. Like, have you ever tried to watch Netflix when you're overseas, and it'll be like, this is not available in your country? It's kind of the same concept where you can see stuff that's on the page, but if that's geographically limited, that video will just say unavailable in your area. So yeah, they can do stuff like that. All right, so back to military examples of promoting, giving glimpses behind the scenes. Here's another good example of that. As a young person, uh, I became interested in aviation. All the time that I was flying with Pearl Doolittle, I was in awe of the fact that I was sitting next to him. All right. So Airman Magazine is a, an online-only web publication uh, that you can, you can view it on a tablet with their app or um, on your computer via like a PDF reader or whatever, but it's multimedia. It's got video. It's got slideshows and pictures like that. But so what they do is they, every month, about like a day or two before it comes out, they post an interactive magazine cover. And that's what this is. So it doesn't autoplay. Um, darn it. But the very first frame is the cover. OK? And it's got this you know, play cover. And it becomes like a magazine cover that starts talking to you. And it's really short, but it teases the, 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 the main article or feature that's in that month's edition of Airman Magazine. It's a pretty cool way to do that. Now, it's very specific to Airman Magazine, obviously. Most other units aren't going to have some sort of publication like this. But maybe you have a newsletter that comes out, or a base paper that you want to try and convert to something like this. But this is only 14 seconds, and it's just a little impactful snippet of the multimedia piece that was in that month's magazine. So that's how they do this. And I think I have one more. Behind the scenes type thing. Oh, okay. Maybe a couple more. Optimization. 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 That's how you say the word. Okay. With the rehabilitation, you have a rehabilitation. The rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. <laughs> the performance optimization. Two. Sorry. <laughs> what happens on the battlefield? On the battlefield, or start that over? On the battlefield. With the rehab. <laughs> Three, two. Every time I see the word, I think Tyson in my head. Oh. Uh, is my makeup running? All right. Is my face still red? All right, let's just uh, cool the jets for a sec. All right. So blue is like the flagship video product for the Air Force. And the, the anchors are shot in this room with that, that video or that magazine wall background and stuff like that. But this is kind of like a behind the scenes, inside look at you know, the show that's coming up. And it just kind of you know, resonates with the audience a little bit. You know, we've all been there. Well, you guys will all be there <laughs> when you're on camera and you just can't get the words out. It's frustrating. But you know, people like to see that kind of thing. Um, but any, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, any kind of like peeks into stuff that they wouldn't normally see behind the scenes stuff is really popular. Um, here's another example of that, which is for the Army's show that is being released. Um, but this is kind of a promo, but also another behind the scenes type look at what they're doing. This is similar to that Airman Mag um, selfie with Jimmy Shea, but let's play. 
and tank is scanning for a target, it's rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. <laughs> All right. And so yeah, you would have like a link that will go to that playlist or whatever, or like to learn more about where you can find this content. Like it gets you excited about it. Like, oh, I want to see more. Okay, it's just a taste, just a little snack. It's not the full story. Okay. So. So the, the main thing about these snackable videos is like, yeah, they got to be short. They got to be easily digestible. Like even that one with uh, Pete where he kept messing up on camera, that was like a little long. Got a little like, okay, I get, I get it, you know. If he had cut that down to like 20 seconds, it might have been a little more impactful. It was a full minute, okay. So with these, you're just thinking super short. It doesn't have to be a whole story. It could just be something that makes your audience chuckle a little bit but gets your name out there to them, okay. Remember, they're just scanning their phones, looking at something while they're waiting for something. This is a really good one. My fellow Americans, our comments sir, will be open at 8.30. Yeah. <laughs> so the way they posted that on their Facebook feed was like, President Obama has a special announcement about our commissary. And then you click play and it's that again. My fellow Americans, our comments sir, will be open at 8.30. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Super hyper targeted to just that local audience, right? But they appreciate that kind of stuff. Like, oh man, Obama talked about it. I mean, obviously nobody was fooled by that, but, <laughs> but it's a very creative way to get that short message out. Do you need an entire package with the commissary manager and like three different shoppers that are gonna be affected by the new commissary? Like, maybe? But this does the exact same thing. It tells them what they need to know in a fun way they're gonna remember I'd argue that this is probably better than a full package. Yes, sir. It seems like there's been a lot of like kind of taking the new snippets of Obama and putting into different things. Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, there's like this this video that did uh, Ariana Grande's problem, and it took. And he, he was singing it. Yeah. Each of the words, the lyrics. I think that's an actual channel. It's just full of like Obama speeches, auto-tuned to songs where he sings them. Yeah. So, but they're popular, and it's okay to use the same technique for your own purposes. All right. Here's another one. My friend over at the EPA uh, did this one. It's really cool. So that's a great way to generate the engagement. You're always wanting to invite your audience to to converse with you, okay? This is a social medium, okay? Social media. Using hashtags and things like that, inviting them to share content, inviting them to you know, share ideas and things like that, conversing with them is how you generate that engagement, build your audience, things like that. But this was super, super simple to produce. This is just free stock footage that he got and he just made the text for it. And it's super easy. Yeah, any one of you guys in here can do that. And you're gonna be doing something like that today, all right? So. Yeah, if you can come up with like hashtags and things like that, it's super helpful. Yeah, you gotta shoot the bald eagle. I did, one day I was doing uh, portraits with one of the first teams that I taught here. We did them outside by the flagpole and there was a bald eagle on the flagpole out in front of the post that day. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, okay, another marine example. <laughs> They're promoting their Snapchat. Marines are gonna eat that up. And yeah, it's awesome. It's short, super simple. It's one, one snippet of one clip of B-roll, but packaged in a way that is great, it works, and it's totally, like you would not see that in a TV newscast, okay? This is the difference. This is specifically for the web. Let's watch it again, because I love it. Yeah. Marines will definitely eat it up, because yeah. like, that's kind of how it was in boot camp. You'd be like this 140 pound person and you're going against somebody who's 181 pounds. <laughs> you're just getting Yeah. <laughs> and, and the cool thing about these is like on, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, they loop. They autoplay and like you can watch, they're short, they're funny, and you're gonna watch it like three or four times and laugh every single time. And then you're gonna go check out Marines on Snapchat. <laughs> Take 
not the other dude, but then the dude that you originally see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So much drama. Like five seconds. One more time. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you guys are gonna capture these moments that you wanna include in your stories and things like that, but I mean, if it's like the best part of your story, throw it up in like a little clip, something like that, and be like, this dude just got wrecked, check out the story. You know, I mean, there's so many ways that you could package cool like moments like this, all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep it light, like we said, that last one was just a single shot. This was more prepared, but again, it's just one shot. It is, that's all it is, it's just pretty. So, but what this was, you know, in the context of the way it was posted was about F-16s. Like, did you know the F-16 can fly a certain amount of speed? You know, it has a ceiling of whatever. A lot of people are into that. There's a lot of plane geeks out there that just love like stats and they, they all have favorite planes. Something like this, just to package that content, because really the content is a spec sheet. That is not super interesting in and of itself. But if you package it something like this and then the post, is the spec sheet, you know, you're probably gonna get some more engagement on that because people are gonna stick around to watch that pretty little clip and then they might read that stuff and then they, hey, they might click over to your website that has all the planes spec sheets on it, you know? So. All right, so that was snackable content. Okay, so what are like some of the key takeaways about snackable content? It needs to be what? Short. Very short. Entertaining, Entertaining exactly. Engaging light. And what about the audio? What is you want to caption it. There's words to it. Everything. Right? Caption everything. Yeah, because people aren't necessarily clicking play on it. They might just be watching the autoplay without the audio. Okay? 